It's been one year since last summer's record-breaking Olympic Games, a Games that highlighted anything is possible, particularly for Muslim women. Every country had both men and women on their teams, with Saudi Arabia, Brunei and Qatar including women in events for the first time. Their hard work has inspired British Muslim women of all ages to get active. In London's borough of Tower Hamlets, the UK's largest Muslim community, Hajar Jailu has created an all-women cycling club that has risen in popularity. In this area where we live, the majority of people are Muslim, or the majority of people who don't cycle are, are Muslim. And being Muslims ourselves, we felt very, it felt it was just important to get people onto bikes for, you know, for their health and everything. But we had quite a lot of barriers to break down because you just don't see Muslim women on bikes. Shaheen Banu is just one of her protégés, someone whose inspiration from the Olympics has enabled her in just one year to ride both a standard bicycle and a BMX. So and I think the Olympics did that a lot, like with women, you know, you visibly seeing women in hijab uh, running and taking part in um, fencing and things. When you, when you saw actual examples that it was a lot easier to identify with women being covered but also taking part in sport. A story similar to Shahina's is highlighted in the critically acclaimed film Wajda. Directed by Haifa al-Mansur, Saudi Arabia's first female director, the film depicts the difficulties a young girl faces in trying to ride a bike. People thought it is very dangerous for women's uh, chastity, like whatever, like purity and physical being and all that. But now the, the law changed in Saudi and they are allowing uh, physical education, still in private schools, not in, um, in public schools, which it is the most dominant. And public schools in, in means like uh, funded by the government and open for everybody in the country. But it is happening and I think it is only the first step to go from private schools um, and then to, to move on into public schools and this the how women regard their bodies and how um, it is changing a lot. Sport England's Active People survey showed British Asian women having the lowest levels of sport participation. More recent programs from governing bodies are showing figures are now on the rise. In Tower Hamlets it's mainly Bangladeshi and Bengali Muslim women who aren't doing as much exercise. Um, so we worked with them initially to ask community women's groups why they weren't taking part in exercise um, and we got a lot of the barriers around childcare, cost, the fact that they needed a women only session and they felt that some of the leisure centres weren't providing the opportunities. So now we've got uh, curtains in the sports hall so that they really are women only, men can't just come in. Um, the sessions are all run by women. So we've put women on different sport coaching qualifications like basketball and badminton and now they run the sessions. Practicing at one of Tower Hamlet's leisure centres, the all-women's basketball team boasts up to 40% of its team as Muslim. Using curtains to prevent men from watching, women are able to freely participate without the often cumbersome hijabs and abayas, something coach Fiona Keown has worked hard to make happen. This is why the curtains, the curtains were never installed in the sports hall before this whole sport for women thing happened. But there was enough women accessing it to merit the curtains going up and to encourage more women to come in here. It's a safe environment, remove their headscarves and, and train and play really hard. Fedosa is one of the regulars, someone who doesn't miss a class as long as it adheres to Muslim traditions. The clothes I'm wearing doesn't just restrict me because I'm wearing uh, modestly. I have to also uh, adhere to uh, not mix with uh, the opposite gender. Other cultural advances are also extending participation, both locally and globally. In the town of Eindhoven, Netherlands' fifth largest city, is the design company Capsters. Owner Cindy van den Bremen has garnered praise for her removable hijab designs that helped overturn the FIFA ban on Muslim women wearing headscarves on the pitch. I discovered there was a niche and um, that's when I started the brand Capsters. And up till today, sales are increasing. There is um, a demand for sports hijabs because more and more women are more aware of their health. They want to practice uh, their sports. 
Though women's gyms are available here in Britain, they are not as prevalent as many would like. Virgin Gyms only has three gyms listed with ladies-only zones, while Fitness First sold off all of their women's centers. Khadija Safari, a Muay Thai kickboxer based in Fulham, was tired of traveling far to train, so she started her own women's classes. People started contacting me from different areas, like, please, can you open something in our area? And then gradually, one by one, we started opening new locations. And then people started contacting me from, like, America or Australia, like, oh, we wish you could have something over here like that. You know, so we managed to launch a world association. Her passion has influenced her other students, who intensively train even during Ramadan. I were doing Ramadan in the summer. I think it's like an 18-hour fast. I have to eat at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't sleep until 3 o'clock in the morning. But, um, yeah, I'm still here to train. But not all Muslim women adhere to these traditions, believing a strong faith can still be maintained without covering up or practicing in women's only groups. Britain's Muay Thai kickboxing champion Roxana Begum actively speaks about her Muslim faith, yet trains with a male coach in mixed environments. We have everything that caters for a Muslim athlete. We have a separate room where you can, you know, it's up to you what you wear and who you train with. And um, obviously my goal is to kind of, you know, reach my potential, which is why I sometimes occasionally train with men because they're pushing me to my boundary, to pushing me to my highest potential. Um, and, you know, I don't compromise on my religion. Um, you know, my beliefs have always been strong and that's what gets me through. Whether or not all women's classes are necessary for everyone is up to the individual. But organizations like Sport for Women and Behind Me Street Games are increasingly making programs available so women have the choice. As is often the case, however, funding plays an important role in the expansion of these initiatives. We had 18 projects in London um, of those 50. The other projects were in a range of places from Newcastle, Manchester, Hastings, you know, Liverpool, loads and loads of places. But absolutely you're right, we only had 50 projects, but we probably could go into hundreds and hundreds of communities and do this work with women and girls that we're doing. Um, but yeah, you can only spread the money so far and you can only do uh, as much work as what the money will, the money will ultimately pay for. So progress is being made, but it's just a start. From women in the local cycling club, to Wajda, and to the Olympic athletes, it's a reminder that perseverance is key in continuing to make change happen. Tiffany Pritchard in London, City News International.